Abudi Jebu Zumar, if you don't return uh, Pravin, I'm taking my things, I'm leaving. You must try that with the EFF. If you don't do this, I'm taking my things, I'm leaving. One of the things I, I am also an advocate for is if you have resources in your country and if the West doesn't want to play fairly with you, then it's like, all right, get out. Y'all want my Cobalt and Coltan? All right, fine. You guys going to trade and deal with me fairly? You're going to treat my people fairly? You're going to pay them a living wage? You're going to give them benefits? You're going to give them all these things that they should have? If you that if that's what you want to do, if you want if you want these 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 resources, you're going to have to pay us for it. If you want my lithium, you're going to have to pay us for it. If you want my rubber, my platinum, my gold, you're going to have to pay us fairly for it. And then you're not going to come into my country and then take it over and destabilize it just so you can have some cheap-ass land and put some sorry-ass puppet in place so that you can extract the resources just for the sake of the corporations in your country. No, 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 no. It's 2024, baby. We 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 going. We we different now. People like Ibrahim Torre, he's built different, right? He 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 he's of the the Thomas Sankara breed, right? Like nah, we you know France get out. Boy, I'm telling you. Hey, don't have time for that. Don't have time. China. Russia, we're going to work with them on our own terms. On our own terms. Look, Uncle Julius, that's what I'm going to call him. Uncle Julius. Because Uncle Julius ain't playing around with none of y'all. I'm telling you. Look, if you guys do not know who this man is, look, let me put, let me put this picture back up. If y'all don't know who this man is, y'all need, need to get with the times. Because this man in South Africa, ooh, 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 ooh. He is, mm. He got some things to say. Let's get into it, y'all. I'm going to share this with you guys. Because I saw this. I was like, the hell? Uncle Julius. Let me see. Let me see. He says some things about Israel and the U.S. Let me share the screen. And we're going to react to this. Julius Malema, part of the EEF, the Economic Freedom Fighters. And yes, he is left. Oh, he, baby, he's left. He's Nelson Mandela left. Yeah. All right. Let's get into it, y'all. Let me share. Let me enlarge. Let's roll this beautiful bean footage. If the bombardment and genocide of Palestinians continues, we'll be left with no choice but to march to the American embassy as we no longer have the Israeli embassy in South Africa. We will march to the American embassy as a sponsor of the war and genocide in Palestine. ICJ Palestine, we are with Palestine, my guy. How we make no apology about that. We will never be on the side of apartheid when we are the victims of apartheid. He said we make no apologies. None. And so a lot of times people will sit here and talk about how um, oh, there's no apartheid in Israel. Even, even, uh, what's his name? Um, Zionist and mayor of, uh, Rotten Cream Cheeseville, Michael Rappaport is saying, oh, there's no, there's no apartheid. Where's the apartheid here in Israel? I don't see apartheid anywhere. Meanwhile, the people who have been through apartheid, like Julius Malema, are looking at Israel and going, oh, we recognize that. 
That's like asking somebody who was born and raised in the Jim Crow South to identify racism. And then when they point it out, you're like, oh, I don't believe you. What? Are you kidding me right now? That's like asking a person who has been physically and emotionally abused by their partner, and then they see somebody else being physically and emotionally abused, and then they look at that person and go, oh, they're being physically, emotion physically and emotionally abused. I can see the signs because I've been through it. And when they point it out, you don't believe them? Hold up. Wait, 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 wait. This is just the same thing as, and, and pardon me for this, no offense to the white people in the chat, but this is like when some white people, when a black person goes, nah, man, they're being racist. And then you go, I don't see it. You better listen to that person that, that, that was a victim. Because a lot of times we can identify what the problems are, what the red flags are before anybody who hasn't been victimized by it has. And so Julius Malema is saying, yeah, there's apartheid definitely in Israel. And then when you have also anti-Zionist Jewish people saying it, and anti-Zionist Israelis, as well as Palestinians saying it, then yes, because they went through it. And they're not just saying it to blow smoke up your behind. It actually exists. And he, wait, and he's talking about closing the U.S. embassy because they're being a sponsor of the terrorism? <gasps> oh, some strong words, Uncle Julius. Let's continue. We refuse Israel, apartheid Israel, to wipe off the earth the Palestinians. Not under our watch. We are no bodies. We are children of the victims of apartheid. With our little influence in our little corner, we shall raise the Palestinian flag unapologetically so. We don't pretend about this. The ANC pretends because we passed a resolution in parliament that the Israeli uh, embassy must be removed. Why is that embassy still opened? They are pretending to be doing something with this public relation, ICJ. There is a fresh attack. Now, we must go back to ICJ and, and say, no, uh, you, you must implement your judgment. Your judgment must be implemented. That is public relations. The real action, if you mean it, close the Israeli embassy. So what Julius is saying is it's not enough just to go to the ICJ. Close the embassy. Close the embassy, cut them off. Israel should not have an embassy that's open in South Africa, and neither should the U.S. That's basically what Julius is saying. Because the thing is, is that what happened with the ICJ is more symbolic than anything in my eyes. Of course, South Africa had to essentially play the game a little bit to show the ineffectual nature of the ICJ, right? But at the same time, on top of that, what is really going to happen if the ICJ needs to enforce the law, enforce the ruling on Israel. What's really going to happen? This is why programs like BDS, Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions, are so powerful. Because it actually affects their material conditions. It says, if you're going to keep doing this, then we're going to cut you off. This is why... They despise what Yemen and the Houthis are doing in the Red Sea because it's literally affecting their daily lives by blocking these shipments from coming through the Red Sea and going into Israel. This is making everything more expensive for them. Their goods that have to come from 
Asia is going to go up in price. Why? Because if they're blocked from the Red Sea, they have to go all the way under, under the Cape, under South Africa, and go all the way up, all the way over, through the Mediterranean Sea and into Israel. That means that adds another two weeks to their trip. Do you guys realize how massive Africa is? Africa is massive. So, with that being said, going after the material conditions is how you affect them. You make these Zionists feel sorry that they ever laid their, uh, their little fingers on a Palestinian. And that's what Julius Malimin is talking about. Actual on the ground effects. Close the embassy for the Israel, close the embassy for the United States and say, you will not have access to us, no friendly relations with us until you make things right with the Palestinians. And this is not foreign to people like Julius Malema, because remember, Nelson Mandela was also an activist. He was a friend of Yasser Arafat. He was a friend to the Palestinians. They literally have a statue built of Nelson Mandela in Palestine. And so Julius Malema is just following the footsteps of Nelson Mandela. Now you see why uh, I'm hype over him, right? All right, let's continue. We're being mobilized here by the media and everyone else to concentrate on nonsense of ICJ. Let's close the Israeli embassy as agreed to by parliament. If we are brave and stop acting like we are rushing to a multinational bodies that are, are, are toothless, we support that action fully. But we think there is a more impactful action that we can take in support of the people of Palestine, and that is closing of the Israeli embassy. Cyril Ramaphosa and the ANC must stop being pretentious, busy over nothing on the Palestinian question. Let's close the embassy. Parliament. Basically, he said, don't be a bunch of wusses. Close it. What are they going to do? What? What are they going to do? South Africa is a part of BRICS, baby. <laughs> what? BRICS literally has more GDP pulled together than the G7. Like, what? What, what are they, they going to do? Are they gonna, actually going to mess with South Africa? Who South Africa partners with? Brazil? China? Russia? India? They're partners with them. And then BRICS just added on more people? More countries? Come on now. Julius is basically giving a a, 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 a a speech to hype him up to actually do the damn thing that they need to do in order to show Israel, like, nah, don't be messing with these people. Keep going. They said we must close the embassy. That is not a declaration of hatred against the Jews. We never said we are fighting the Jews, we are fighting apartheid Israel. There's a difference. And we make no apology about that. <laughs> and that's the thing. He says, look, this has nothing to do with Jewish people. This has to do with the apartheid conditions in Israel. And a lot of people are keep talking about, and here's well, here's one of my biggest issues. A lot of people talk about, oh, well, we just want a ceasefire, ceasefire, ceasefire. Uh-uh, no, uh-uh, ceasefire is not good enough. Not good enough. The occupation and the apartheid must end. When people say, oh, we just want a ceasefire, that's weak sauce. That's weak. Uh-uh, get out of here with that.
that's like that's like a, a woman being in an abusive relationship with a man, and you go, just just stop hitting her, just stop hitting her, but stay with the guy, stay with them. Are you kidding me? Right what? Absolutely not. Leave his ass, kids, and take the house. Two, kick his ass out. Put out a restraining order. Do not let, cut him off. Uh-uh, no. Do not stand for that BS. That's that's what it is. This is what South Africa is saying. Uh-uh, we're not doing that just ceasefire. No, 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 no. It's in the occupation, in the apartheid. Because that's what's wrong. Because even if you did a ceasefire, then guess what? The ceasefire happens, they're still going to keep the Palestinians out. That's their land. They've been on there for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. You're not going to kick them out. What if they just said, oh, ceasefire in South Africa? Then what? South Africa wouldn't even be a black nation no more. It wouldn't even be an African nation anymore. Julius Malema knows this intimately. Let's continue. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video. Thank you very much. Y'all are doing great. Let's continue. My guy, why, why should we care about whether there will be a retaliation from the West? We are engaged in a struggle against imperialism and colonialism. And we, are, we make no apology that we are not friends with the West. It doesn't mean we can't trade with them. We'll trade with them through our own terms. They will not come and impose themselves on us like they are doing with the ANC. We are not part of CODESA. We have never had a facilitation between the Boers and the owners of the means of production here in South Africa and the ANC that was facilitated by Britain and all of that. The, this democracy came because the Oppenheimers left the country to go and meet the ANC in exile and said to the ANC, we are going to tell the National Party to end apartheid and you are going to come back and govern and you govern business as usual. Nothing changes. The ANC said yes. We don't have such an agreement with the West, with America, with the Oppenheimers. We don't know the Oppenheimers. Now when I saw the Oppenheimers for the first time, was there at uh, Prince Mangosutu Telezi's funeral. I was like, eh? This guy is a big guy. Even the Oppenheimers get out of their house to come and bury him. And the way they were so in charge, they were not sitting down in a funeral. They were going up and down. We got to get away. So. Okay. The Oppenheimers himself, the owners of South Africa. So we have no time for those people. We are going to reclaim our country. We are going to work with the Oppenheimers. We are going to work with Rupert through our own terms. He won't tell us what to do. He's a respected businessman. The Oppenheimers are respected business people. But it can be business as usual. That's all we're saying. It can be business as usual. Something has to give. We're not going to be controlled by Rupert here, who speaks to them like little kids. You must go and ask how Rupert speaks to your ministers. You can't try that with me. A white man. I don't care if you've got money or you don't have. I used to have a a, a white a mentor in Pulukwane called Jimmy, called Tom Pelitos or something. One day he spoke to me in a bad way in a meeting and said, oh, you must never try that. He thought I was joking. I stood up. I said, no, 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 no. No white man speaks to me like that. Like, you don't do that. Don't do it. I don't care whether he was my man. No white man speaks to me the way Rupert speaks to your ministers. 
Ask Mbalula, Mbalula uta ubuja, he will tell you. Wulla need Mbalula. Ila mo, rupet ila mo address, aile golfunga rupe yak aile. Where you going? Our address are rupet. Babu di jebu zumar, if you don't return uh, Pravin, I'm taking my things, I'm leaving. You must try that with the EFF. If you don't do this, I'm taking my things, I'm leaving. Sela chayu. One of the things I I am also an advocate for is if you have resources in your country and if the West doesn't want to play fairly with you, then it's like, all right, get out. Y'all want my cobalt and coltan? All right, fine. You guys going to trade and deal with me fairly? You're going to treat my people fairly? You're going to pay them a living wage? You're going to give them benefits? You're going to give them all these things that they should have? If you that if that's what you want to do, if you want if you want these 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 resources, you're gonna have to pay us for. It. If you want my lithium, you're gonna have to pay us for. It. If you want my rubber, my platinum, my gold, you're gonna have to pay us fairly for. It. And then you're not going to come into my country and then take it over and destabilize it just so you can have some cheap ass land and put some sorry ass puppet in place so that you can extract the resources just for the sake of the corporations in your country. No, 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 no. It's 2024, baby. We, 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 we going, we, we different now. People like Ibrahim Torore, he's built different, right? He, 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 he's of the, the Thomas Sankara breed, right? Like, nah, we, you know, France, get out. Boy, I'm telling you. Hey, don't have time for that. Don't have time. China, Russia, we're going to work with them on our own terms. On our own terms. The Chinese don't go around Africa stealing anything from Africans. Your corrupt leaders overcompensate in exchange for something personal. That's what happens. The Chinese don't steal anything. One, well, they are in business. When the more uh, you give them, the better for them. Why must they say no? Your leaders are not negotiating in good faith. They are negotiating with their families in mind. That's why they overcompensate. So we have no such a relationship with China. We've got a socialist and developmental relationship with China, and we know that China will help us. Russia is not our friend ideologically. We are with Russia in its fight against Ukraine because we know it's a NATO fight. It's not a Ukraine fight. And you hear that? Because ideologically, we don't have much in common. They don't have much in common with Russia. I don't have much in common with Russia. And if anybody comes in and goes, oh my God, you're a Putin puppet. For who? What? Putin is anti-communist. Absolutely not. I have no love for that man. Putin is... How can I put it? He's not that much different than the leaders of the West. The only difference is he just doesn't want to be a puppet of the West. That's it. All right? Ideologically, he's a lot aligned with them, actually. He just resists the West. That's all it is. So that NATO can expand its territory and be closer to Russia and undermine Russia. For that, we'll be with Russia because we can't allow territorial expansion of imperialism and colonialism in whatever direction. 
But Putin is not left. The government of Russia is not left ideologically. If anything, Putin will be more aligned with the U.S. in terms of policy and ideology, except there are fundamental differences on imperialism, where Russia feels that America wants to control it through expanding the military base of NATO, because the military base of NATO is a an American military base. So we that that it were with Russia in that context, not that ideologically we are aligned, but with Vietnam, Vietnam, with Cuba, with uh, China, it's a clear ideological alignment of the left forces, and that's where we belong, and we don't isolate anyone. Do you want to watch? So that's what Julius Malema was saying. And he's basically saying Israel does, should not have an open embassy among us. This was actually shared in Al Jazeera back in November. It says South African lawmakers vote to suspend Israel ties, close embassy. It says the motion calling for the closure of embassy passed with 248 votes in favor and 91 votes against. So. It says the action is largely symbolic because it will be up to President Cyril Ramaphosa's government whether to implement it. So that is what is transpiring. Julius Malema saying, "Don't not don't just close the Israeli embassy, but close the U.S. embassy too. Close them both." What do you guys think about that, man? Like. Because I, I, I honestly agree with him. Like, no, nah, if you're if if the United States is sponsoring the terroristic acts of the Zionist state against the Palestinian people, then yeah, close the embassy. Go ahead. Because what the US is doing is wrong. Wrong is wrong. And it should not be taking place at all. And as many protests and boycotts that are going on right now against the state of Israel, it is not the United States as the population that stands with the Zionist entity, also known as Israel. It is the leaders that are circumventing the world, the people that stand with Israel. It's like a friend of mine said, she said, the governments may be with Israel, but the streets are with Palestine. It's time for the streets to be re represented within our governments, not the other way around. Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash JB font. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.